Alright guys, we are back. And this time it's going to get a bit technical. I think you guys are going are to enjoy this though. As research um, continues, more research continues about uh, Nintendo and their involvement with this development of the, uh, the NX, as time goes on, things start to become clearer as far as how the uh, graphical performance and what type of um, uh, performance you can expect from uh, their next generation console next year. Now, back in September of this year, Nintendo joined um, what is known as the Kronos Group. And what they are is basically a uh, multifaceted developer um, of these application um, programming interfaces for developers to use in their games, uh, also known as APIs. So the Kronos Group has developed uh, OpenGL, uh, OpenCL, WebGL, um, and so on and so forth uh, for use in different computer applications and games to make it um, easier for developers to use their programs in conjunction with the graphics cards and the CPUs uh, to work more efficiently with their games to get the best performance, okay? So, Nintendo joined this group uh, in September as a uh, to have API participation um, in this in this group. Now the next API to be released by the Kronos group is going to be Vulkan, and Vulkan is basically the next generation beyond Mantle, which uh, has been uh, which was used briefly, mainly in like uh, AMD cards and things like that. Um, basically it's like the other side of DirectX 12 okay so with Vulkan which is gonna, gonna be released uh, late this year in 2015 and Nintendo joining the Kronos group it's pretty much uh, I'm not gonna say guaranteed but pretty much guaranteed that the NX will be using a variation of the Vulkan API for the uh, development uh, operations of the, of the dev kits and um, of the system. So what Vulkan is, I'm reading it here from the page, uh, Vulkan is a low overhead cross-platform 3D graphics and compute API first announced at GDC 2015 by the Kronos Group. The Vulkan API was initially referred to as the Next Generation OpenGL Initiative or simply GL Next by Kronos. Uh, but use of those names were discontinued once the Vulkan name was announced. Like OpenGL, Vulkan targets high-performance real-time 3D graphics applications such as games and interactive media across all platforms, and offers higher performance and lower CPU usage, much like DirectX 12 and Mantle. In addition to its lower CPU usage, Vulkan is also able to better distribute work among numerous CPU cores as concluded by a simulation that used an infinity fast GPU as a 16 core CPU. Uh, Vulkan is derived and built upon components from AMD's Mantle. So like it, basically like an improvement on, um, on Mantle that they had uh, just briefly there. It didn't last very long but Vulkan is a, is a higher version of that which is, looks like it's going to be used by a vast majority of developers who don't want to use Microsoft's uh, DirectX 12, which I know that Nintendo and Sony don't want to do. Now, so basically, um, this API, what it what it will do is make it so the graphics card of the whatever you know GPU they're using uh, will be um, used more so and more efficiently with less draw calls from the CPU. And now a draw call is basically it, the GPU uh, communicating with the CPU asking it to draw something on the screen. So you're talking about large number of items on the screen at once. So you got a gigantic city full of people, you got gigantic uh, landscapes full of trees and grass and 
you know, basically the CPU of a PC or a console that needs to draw that information on the screen and the GPU will fill it in with graphics. So you, there you got your wireframes, you got your geometry, right? So this API, Vulkan, um, is going to be, uh, what it looks like is going to be e just as good as DirectX 12 or maybe even better uh, because the mantle was already basically just as good as DirectX 12. So you're going to have a lot of reduced uh, CPU overhead, reduced CPU bottlenecking, um, allowing higher throughput for GPU calculations and rendering. Uh, basically, it means that it's, it's a very efficient, fast, and you'll be able to have a lot of things on the screen at once. Now, um, uh, you take for example, since it would have similar performance to DirectX 12, take for example the uh, um, Square Enix released a demo of their uh, what they call Witch Chapter uh, DirectX 12 tech demo, which rendered 63 million polygons on the screen in in uh, each scene. Okay, uh, fully rendered and fully shaded. Now. Of course, they were using a really high-end PC to accomplish that. Now, if you take that reasoning there and you think about the optimization of a console and the um, API they need to be used, something like that tech demo could theoretically possibly be done on the Nintendo's next console if it's if it's what they are saying it's going to be, what the rumors have said. Uh, a really high power console with um, the latest chips and performance uh, possibilities. Um, obviously, in order to get a demo to work, they need to have that high powered, uh, those high powered PCs to do that because um, the console itself is not ready yet. You know, it's in development. <laughs> so, but. What, those, what that does, those demos do, is basically show the developers what the console will be capable of in the final form when everything's optimized for it, okay? Um, so it's really exciting um, to, to see that uh, Nintendo uh, is going to be uh, involved in this uh, Kronos group with the latest uh, API in, uh, infrastructure because what that means is, is that the PlayStation 4, which doesn't use Mantle, doesn't use Vulkan, it uses a, a lower level API. You can research it for yourself. I'm not going to do it here for you, but um, the good news about that is that developers can still make their PlayStation 4 games and still port them up to a console that is more powerful like the NX and uh, not have a problem. Now, um, since the PlayStation 4 uses a different API, it may be uh, more difficult for them to port a NX game to the PlayStation 4 because the PlayStation 4 uses a different API. So it, it would be in Sony's best interest to adopt the Vulkan um, API for the PlayStation 4, uh, maybe at a lower level, and the games would be able to run on both systems uh, or ported to both systems. A developer was saying about the Vulkan API is that it would be great if they could make a game for the Steam box um, you know, the higher power PCs and be able to port them to P PS4 a lot easier. Um, so there's another possibility there of more parity uh, in the future. But um, so it's really um, interesting to think about the possibilities of where the uh, the tech could go. Now um, you're looking at a little bit here at this um, demo, and it looks absolutely amazing, of course. Uh, but also you have to remember that uh, Square Enix also showed a Final Fantasy 15 demo running on the PlayStation 4 that looked extremely, extremely impressive. And um, granted, not as good as this, but uh, you know, we're getting to the point where the graphics are, are getting so realistic that they look even better than real life, honestly. Like, it looks like fantasy mixed with reality. So um, either way, you know, granted, the <laughs> the NX is not going to be as raw powerful as a uh, quad Titan uh, X running an SLI on the top of the line CPU. We, we know that it's not going to be that powerful. 
but the API that they use for the console is going to be imperative in order for them to get the most to the metal graphical uh, performance from the GPU by taking the load off the CPU to render the most amount of objects on the screen at once, for example, 63 million polygons, for example, uh, fully and, and fully shaded and all, all different kind of uh, lighting effects going on at the, at the same time. The API has a key role in this. So keep that in mind when you hear more about Vulkan in the future. And you can bet that Nintendo's going to use it because they guess what? They're a part of the Kronos group. All right, guys. We'll talk to you later.